Are you struggling with leveling? Do you feel like you're doing something wrong, but can't really put your finger on it? Let's be real for a second. Leveling is tough in Flife. Probably even tougher than being a Chirafis, and that's probably why you're here right now. That's what this game is all about, so why deliberately make the experience slower than it has to be? My name is Imanalus, and today I'll be going over the different ways you can make the most out of your grinding journey. So, before we get started with the real lessons, let's get the basics out of the way. Because whenever you're picking your opponent, it is important to understand the position that you're in. As we all know, killing monsters gives you EXP, and the tougher the monster you're killing is, the more EXP you get from them. However, fighting a stronger opponent isn't always synonymous with efficiency. You see, the tougher the monster you kill is, the less damage you'll be dealing to them, and this handicap becomes more apparent the higher you go. And not only that, the monster will also hit you harder than usual, making yourself exposed to more danger and in potential risking your untimely death. Aside from treading on thin ice, there's also another reason why going as tough as you can go isn't always ideal. While the EXP you're getting per monster is higher than against some weaker opponents, you're also taking more time to kill them. This is where EXP efficiency comes in, making the most out of your time in comparison to your experience gained. Let's assume that a monster that's 10 levels higher than me takes about 10 seconds to kill and gives me roughly 0.5% EXP. That's pretty good. Although, fighting them does make me prone to wetting my pants, maybe even more than an angry giraffe does. And if they happen to catch me off guard with a crit when I was low HP, I would probably find myself kissing dirt as if I was on a honeymoon. Alternatively, I could be facing monsters that are maybe 3 to 5 levels higher than me, and while they would only give me about 0.3% EXP when killed, I'm only taking 5 seconds to kill them and probably not struggling to face tank their attacks. This brings me back to my point. Toughest isn't always the best. The most effective EXP routes come from striking a balance between kill speed and experience gains, ultimately leading to EXP efficiency. Don't be afraid to experiment between different spawns, maybe track a minute or two of grinding and see how much EXP you earn in that time. Spot that gives you the most EXP in that designated time would be the most efficient location for now. Don't forget to revisit or try out new places when leveling up and switching equipment, as the balance is subject to change. Oh, and also, under no circumstances should you go for enemies that are below your own level. I brought this up in my life-changing tips guide before, but doing so will make you gain significantly less EXP than you should. So by all means, avoid doing so unless necessary, and consider if killing these monsters, possibly for a certain objective, is really worth the effort. That time you're grinding trivial monsters could be used for gaining experience from enemies relevant to you instead. As we all know, or at least should know by now, building your character is one of the most crucial things in Flife Universe. You're given a limited amount of stat and skill points to spend, granting you freedom over choosing what you want your character to specialize in, but also imposes restrictions on doing absolutely everything. So the important question is, do you know what you're doing? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you do. You've already checked out at least one of my job guys, right? Right? Why did you go silent all of a sudden? In case you haven't checked out any of my job guides yet, or worse, have absolutely no clue what job to go for, I recommend checking them out now. I go over in great detail what the different jobs are and what they and their advanced choices can do in those videos, so you should catch pretty quickly on what to expect. I won't be going over those details on this video. Go on, check them out! I'll leave the links to every one of them in the description below. I'll be waiting. Expectantly. Assuming you know how the basics of your class under control, let's talk about the actual building process. The objective here should be pretty clear. We want your character to do as much damage as possible. However, there doesn't exist an absolute correct answer to this. Character building is a combination of many different elements, where the presence or absence of one can heavily alter how you should prioritize other factors in your build. Like if you just happen to have a well-upgraded set that gives a hefty bonus to your hit rate, you probably don't have to pay attention to your hit rate anymore and focus on something else instead. Focusing too much on a certain element in your build can actually damage your performance and cause you to stall instead. Just like choosing your enemies, it's important that you strike a balance between damage and the other factors that contribute to the damage that you do like hit rate, attack speed and casting speed. Get your hands on equipment sets and weapons that support the direction your character is going, learn skills that go in line with your build of choice, and use your stat points to balance everything out or lean a bit more towards the direction you want your character to take. The most important thing to realize is that a predetermined stat build in the long run isn't really that relevant, 
but rather how you make your stat points work with your own. Like I said earlier, there is no absolute correct answer. Other than a giraffe, of course. You can't go wrong with that. With all of that being said, the final decision of how you want your character to be rests in your hands. Don't be afraid of making a bad choice, though. Experimenting on things and learning through trial and error, in my opinion, is part of the experience. Stat points are more or less expendable, and you even get a chance to re-roll your stats by the time you hit level 60, so consider your early levels to be a chance to really try out different things. Do some research and exploring, find out what kind of gear you can get as you level up, and build your character in the way that you see fit. As usual, I'll leave the link to Lifepedia's item database in the description. At the end of the day, the most important thing is that you're enjoying the game, so don't let the fear of failure and something new take away from your adventure. Now that you've got your character all checked out, it would be a great chance to put a cherry on top of your build by taking advantage of elements. Elements can give you a considerable boost to your damage when used correctly, and I'm here to teach you just that. However, elements can also be dangerous or a waste without appropriate knowledge. Luckily, I already made a guide to elements a while back, so if you wish to learn more about them, their strengths and weaknesses, and how they behave both with attacks and skills, I suggest checking that one out. I won't be focusing on those details in this video. Elements are convenient because by simply using the right element against your foe, you will be dealing substantially more damage based on their weakness against the said element and the bonus attack power provided by the elemental upgrade. You could be doing at least 30% additional damage to your enemy. The trade-off is though that, just as you might do extra damage towards foes who are weak against your element, you might do less damage towards one who is strong against it. But fortunately, with right planning, this shouldn't be a huge issue. Elements are also one of the cheapest upgrades you can actually make, and are fairly affordable pretty early into your adventure. In Totemia Europe, where I'm from, it's possible to attempt an elemental upgrade on a weapon which is under 100,000 at the time of writing, provided you don't have any of the resources already in hand. The more you have, the less you have to spend. With that being said, with good money management, you could already consider using elements around your 30s, or whenever you have the spare money in hand. Of course, upgrading isn't only limited to elements, and once you have all the basics down and have more to spend somewhere later in your adventure, consider making upgrades to your equipment. There's many different kinds of upgrades you can make, and a lot of information related to upgrading, so I'll leave a link to my upgrading guide in the description below as well. Don't worry, that's the last one. At least I think so. Blame it on that mischievous smile if I'm wrong. Anyway, if you're considering adding an element to your weapon, there are two ways you could go about this. You could either apply an element to a weapon you would use until your next weapon upgrade based on what elements the monsters coming up have, or you could have several weapons, each one of them having a unique element and allowing you to take advantage of elements against all foes, or anywhere between that. The former is obviously more limiting, but the latter also comes with more expenses for maintaining multiple weapons and more inventory spaces are used on carrying spare weapons. I personally prefer the former, as it allows me to focus on one strong weapon, as with the correct strategy it is the most effective, and it's a lot more realistic towards the future where you cannot just be maintaining five ridiculously expensive weapons. And besides, I think somebody who just started out might find upgrading a single weapon more manageable. Your choice, though. If you went with the latter route, then that's okay, just swap weapons as necessary when switching monsters and you're golden. But in case you went with the former route, then you'll need to look ahead just a little bit. Let's say that you were about to apply an element on a level 27 weapon, and the next upgrade you're getting is at level 34. With that in mind, use the Mars View function on your map and check what elements your possible encounters have in that level range, anywhere between 27 and let's say 40. Judging from how the elements are spread between monsters, I'd probably choose to counter Earth as that seems to be the most likely to securely carry me to 34, despite the rough level gap in the beginning. Boldly assuming that a giraffe would struggle with going straight to rock muscles at 27, I could also consider making a water weapon to counter fire first and then making a wind weapon to counter Earth later. That way I could just go for Jack the Hammers first, allowing me to close the gap before moving on. Another important thing to mind is that some of the normal varied monsters, or the middle ones, are ranged, and it's impossible to tell which one it is before you actually fight them, which makes running around them a risk if you're a melee character. Luckily, it is possible to use Lifepedia to determine whether the middleman is actually ranged or not. If you go and search up the monster in question and expand the drop down many of their attack patterns, you can see the range of all their attacks. If all the attacks are 2 meters or under, it's a melee, but anything beyond that usually means that it's a ranged mob. This is typically listed as their second attack. Elements are a crucial factor to maximize your damage, but don't get too carried away and forget to properly leave funds for food, potions, and other gear pieces you might need. And share of tribute, of course. Remember that elements are only temporary to your character and will require constant changing, while the more permanent gear you have around that will still complement the damage you're doing with elements. So make sure you got your priorities straight and take care of your character. The elements can wait.
even after doing all that prep work to get your character in top shape and make the experience as smooth as possible, you'll eventually have to face reality. No matter how strong your character is in the long run, progressing in Five Universe can be slow and even quite painful at times, which is a given by its grindy design. Fortunately though, questing can offer a good change of pace from the grind and when done properly, can even be a considerable advantage to your leveling efficacy. However, I must stress the fact that this game is not questing oriented and you will find yourself mostly grinding as you go further in the game. Consider questing to be a great opportunity to give you leverage as you go and occasionally provide you with easy levels, but not the norm for how you'll be progressing in the game. With that disclaimer out of the way though, let's move on. Questing in Flight Universe is a lucrative feature in the game which allows you to make substantial amounts of progress in a relatively short amount of time, especially at higher levels as grinding gets slower. At lower levels, the amount of money you're also getting out of questing is nothing short of life-changing and can really help you with finding the basics to get your character started. On top of that, Flight Universe introduced that certain quests and quest lines also offer extra inventory slots, which of course are always welcome. It is possible to do most quests at any level you want, but it is highly recommended to get involved with it as soon as possible. Quests often grant experience on top of inventory slots and other rewards, but the amount of experience gained is of course scaled based on your level. You'll be making the most out of your quests by doing them as soon as you're able, which often ends up benefiting you. So keep your eyes peeled on your map every once in a while and see if you have any markers around. Maybe it's something you definitely wouldn't want to miss, just like you wouldn't want to miss a rare giraffe sighting. There are basically three types of quests in the game that help you with leveling. The most important ones out of them are the quest lines, which over the course can grant great rewards and help a lot with leveling along the way. The second type are the occasional quests and mini quest lines that aren't quite as important, but provide nice rewards by the end of it. The third type are the office quests, the most consistent out of them all. Given out by numerous quest offices in Madrigal, each time you reach the level range of a new mob, they can offer quests to collect quest items or kill flying monsters usually for some EXP and Penya, along with occasional fetch quests. The actual split for quests is between individual quests and quest lines, separated by yellow and red quest markers, but this honestly made it easier to explain. There are also some event quests, displayed with green and blue markers, but these aren't typically related to leveling. Ideally, you should be taking advantage of all the quests whenever you can, but in case questing just doesn't happen to be your cup of tea, you should at least stick to the quest line since they'll serve you for a long time, especially the one you can start from Rion and Inflari starting from level 15. The other quests tend to be more opportunistic in nature. If you can do them on level, they can save you some effort, but if you end up overleveling too much, they might not even be worth your time anymore and you might be better off skipping them altogether. When picking up a quest later than its intended level, do reflect for a bit whether the quest is worth it or if you're better off grinding instead. In case you just want the inventory slots, you can also use the Flyfipedia to check all the available quests and quest lines and see what rewards they have. Either way, especially if you're starting out, do consider making questing a habit. You won't regret it, and your wallet won't cry. Once you've got all of that covered, the last thing you could do to make the most out of your character is to go and get some buffs. And no, I'm not talking about the mediocre stuff you get from your resident buff pang or by boosting your self-esteem by pretending to be a giraffe. I mean, they'll get the job done, but it leaves so much to be desired. Player supports can provide you much better buffs and enhance your fervor, possibly even making up for what you might be lacking. One of the ways you can get yourself buffs is simply by asking. Usually just asking nicely for buffs in a town will bring a nearby ringmaster into answer to your call, but considering how short buffs actually are, it isn't exactly sustainable. You'd be going to town and back to your leveling spot every 15 minutes, which doesn't make for a productive grind. And you can't really assume for a ringmaster to always come flying by to give you buffs either. However, if you want to take matters into your own hands, there are alternative options. One thing that you could do is go and look for a leveling partner. Typically, when a support assist or ringmaster is looking for a partner, you might catch one in the shout channel when near a city. You can also try asking for a partner yourself and hope that somebody up to the task will respond. Not only is getting a partner to level with beneficial for the buffs, but also getting into a party with contribution EXP share will end up granting you both additional EXP, assuming that they're actually trying to keep you alive. This could also be a wonderful opportunity to get to know some other players than just the giraffe who happens to make videos on YouTube and possibly forming contacts that will last beyond just the leveling session. Flight Universe is an MMO after all, so whatever friends you're gonna make will surely make your experience a lot more colorful. But in case you don't feel like going through the hassle of looking for a partner and don't mind the extra management on your part, you could also consider simply making a support character on another account and playing with both of them at the same time. 
This will give you the added benefit of getting exactly the buffs you want and always conveniently having a support when you need it, but multiboxing is it for everyone. Whatever you prefer to do is completely up to you. Now that you hopefully got buffs sorted out though, your character is ready to take on the world and trust me, nothing is going to stand in their way. As long as you don't mess with the giraffe, they're gonna beat you up. But well, that concludes everything that comes into my mind about leveling. So thanks for watching the video. I hope it gave you all the answers and giraffe jokes that you needed and that you'll have a pleasant experience in Flight Universe going forward. If you found this video helpful, consider leaving a like to let me know or maybe even leaving a comment to express yourself better or if you were left with any questions. If you want to see more content like this in the future, don't hesitate to subscribe as well so you'll be notified when I'm uploading next. I'm eager to keep bringing more Flight Universe and gaming related content to you, so hold your giraffes until that time comes. But until then, it's bye bye.